space. Every second of every minute of every day for over 900 years. Yes. I fought for peace in a universe at war. Now the time has come to face the choices I've made in the name of the Doctor. Our future depends on one single moment of one impossible day. The day I've been running from all my life. The day of the Doctor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a movie review slash kind of TV review for a Doctor Who episode, which is also kind of like a TV movie. Uh, It was an hour and 17 minutes long. It aired November 23rd, 2013, titled The Day of the Doctor. Um, I want to try to do some more movie reviews anytime I have not a whole lot of time to edit um, I'm going to probably do a movie review because it's, it's much easier for me to edit, but, um, I am here and this was a very exciting episode. This is kind of, it aired in November, so it wasn't a Christmas special, but it was like, you know, it was a huge deal. So, what is this about? In 2013, something terrible is awaiting in London's National Gallery. In 1562, a murderous plot is afoot in Elizabethan England, and somewhere in space, an ancient battle reaches its devastating conclusion. This is about the day. The day that the Doctor did probably the most unspeakable action that he regrets forever. What was that action? Well, that action was, in fact, destroying all of Gallifrey and killing not only all of the Daleks there, but all of the Time Lords as well, making him the final and only Time Lord in existence. Supposedly. And that is what this is. This is the culmination of every Doctor. And included a sneak preview of the next Doctor in the series at the time. Um, And a Doctor who was kind of titled as the War Doctor. Which was played by... Hold on. uh, John, John Hurt. John Hurt who... Has played in some other stuff. Alien. Alien might be something I know him from. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. I'd know. Hellboy 2. A lot of stuff. Hellboy, the original, I believe. A whole bunch of stuff. It keeps on going. I'm not going to read them all off. But anyway, I like this movie a lot. And I'm going to call it a movie because it is a TV movie. It's an hour 17. It's not as long as other TV movies. But it aired on TV and it's a lot longer than the standard TV episodes. So, So, who is the main doctor? The main doctor is Matt Smith's doctor at the current time of this release. Um, and this was, I think, getting toward... I haven't gone through... Okay. My favorite Doctor is David Tennant. I have to I have to get you guys back and, you know, get you caught up with me. My favorite Doctor is David Tennant. And by far, my favorite Doctor. Now, of course, I haven't seen the original TV show, maybe one day, but I'm gonna, I need to get through the current one before I go back to any old ones. Um, and, of course, David Tennant is in this, so just be aware. But back after David Tennant died in Doctor Who, uh, his doctor died, I kind of stopped watching. I kind of fell out, and I didn't, I 
barely could get through the, the next episode, I was kind of distraught and just gave up. Because, I mean, I was watching some people react to these episodes recently, and someone made a good point. Doctor Who has changed. Doctor Who is about change. And that is extremely true. They get you attached to characters, and then they change. Change has to happen. I mean, some people won't watch the show with certain doctors. Some people, I mean, most of the time when a new doctor comes along, I'm not going to want to. Also, Peter, Peter, the doctor after Matt Smith, I don't know his full name. It starts with Peter. It was interesting. He was in a Matt Smith episode. I'm pretty sure it's, no, no, it was a David Tennant episode. Um where they're in Italy, around the volcano that erupts. And he's there playing a character, and it's kind of funny, because people know him as the 12th Doctor. And it's kind of interesting, because, you know, you'd think that you really wouldn't reuse an actor, but maybe they liked him so much that they put him in as the Doctor. So it's kind of interesting. But... I, I, I didn't go on. I wasn't moving on. And then I started watching Matt Smith and um, the girl from Jumanji is also there. Um, which at this point, at this point she's not here. Um, she already had her out of the season back in season six. Amy Pond, Karen Gillian, uh, she is in a lot of stuff nowadays, including Welcome to the Jungle, uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, Avengers Endgame, and Guardians of the Galaxy, and she is known for Doctor Who, for sure, um, and I think my favorite role of hers is not Nebula, but I think it's Amy Pond. Amy Pond's... The way that Amy Pond went out without spoiling made me extremely sad. It kind of is one of the most sad yet beautiful endings to a character in this franchise. But anyway, at least of what I've seen, be aware. I haven't seen everything. But anyway... um. So this movie starts off with exactly how it says. Now it starts off with really cool, like the TARDIS gets picked up. They do this cool shot too, sorry, where um, the main character is speeding up with, uh, not the main character, not the doctor, but um, Jenny, Jenna Coleman as Clara is speeding up in a bike and goes through the TARDIS doors and then stops. It's pretty cool. Um, but they do this cool little shot, which they actually used Crane for, um, with picking up a TARDIS and having the Doctor hang out of the TARDIS as the credits go along, which is really neat. And they get to this gallery, and there's this really cool painting that is kind of 3D-esque. It's really neat. Uh, it's basically like Time Lord art, basically. Uh, a moment of time frozen in the painting, which is really awesome. And then... A little bit later, we cut back to uh, David Tennant, which I, my reaction was amazing. I, um, I was freaking out finally seeing something new with David Tennant. I, I don't think any of the audiobook stuff is anything I'm interested in. Of course, I'd love to hear David Tennant's voice, but they need to bring him back as the Doctor. I mean, just bring him back for another full season, which I think what they're doing is in the 13th season... What they're going to do is David Tennant's going to be back, but instead of being the doctor, he's going to be a uh, companion to a doctor, which will be kind of interesting, I guess, if that is the case, but we'll see what happens. I'm not holding my breath on that. We'll see. But he's in love with uh, Queen Elizabeth the first, I think. And there's a whole little romance that goes on there. And the ancient battle in space is where the war doctor is. So there's these three stories that all collide. And these are the three main doctors that will collide. The war doctor, which is actually, of course, they're all the same, but the war doctor, 
who is has yet to do the unthinkable act, killing who knows how many people innocent wise, and who knows killing how many kids possibly too who are on Gallifrey. Um, and you can tell that they do a very good job of of putting that side, and each doctor is kind of like a different person. David Tennant is kind of the regretful doctor. I think that's actually what they call him in the episode. And um, Matt Smith doctor is kind of the forgetful doctor. He chooses to forget. And of course, as each doctor goes along, I mean, they see more and more stuff. You know, David Tennant lost several companions. But Matt Smith did as well. And Matt Smith saw more terrible things because it's not just the companions, it's the people he can't save too. So they have their the troubles and it all, the hurt and everything is with them. And you, you can sh- it, it shows, which is sad, but it shows. I mean, they do a good job with the emotions of the series. Um, and there is a part where they have all the doctors in it. Uh, I know they had to kind of like put some face over like plaster some people's faces because they couldn't get them back but um it was great matt smith is my second favorite doctor and i i don't think matt uh david Tennant or matt smith i think they're both going to be my two favorites i don't think that any of the other ones are going to be my favorite we'll see um i'm always willing i'm gonna i'm gonna try of course but I will watch the new season when David Tennant gets added in. If I can watch it straight, you know, I'm going to get caught up so I can watch that. But we'll see. Um, so there and, and there's also um, what's her name? Rose Tyler, Billy Piper is back once again. But this time she's not playing. She, she's really not playing Rose Tyler. Um, she is kind of Rose Tyler, but she's also, you know, she's not really Rose Tyler in this. What she is, is she's a conscious of this massive, it's a tiny little box, but it it has a weapon of mass destruction, basically can destroy an entire planet, which is what the doctor uses or uh, the war doctor has yet to use, but the other doctors u- um, use to destroy Gallifrey. And Rose Tyler is the image that it, because it grew like a self conscious is the image that he uses to speak to the war doctor. And it's great to see her back. I kind of cried too. Rose Tyler is still my favorite companion out of all the companions, although Amy Pond is, is like tied and is slowly creeping up. Amy Pond was amazing. Amy and Rory were great. Sorry about the yawn. But it was so good. And you can tell David Tennant does his little uh, at the very end too. He does his I don't want to go. He says that before he leaves on his last episode and boy is he a great actor. I want to see him in so many more things. I would love to see him in more Doctor Who things. Bring him back. You know, have him for another season or two. Please. I mean, I, I loved his Doctor. And and his Doctor was not very remorseful. He didn't he didn't give people a lot of second chances. He gave them one chance and that was it. You did not heed his warnings. He did not care. And Matt Smith is a little bit different. Matt Smith is a bit more cautious, not as, you know, maybe a bit too cautious at times. And I love that dynamic. The doctors can change so much between doctors, and I can't wait to see what the future doctors are like, even though they might not be my favorite. They're all the same character portrayed by different people, and that's why this Doctor Who franchise can probably go on for a very long time. Because they can have so many different doctors, so many different actors and actresses playing those roles. It can go on for a very long time. But I basically summarized it fully. I'm not going to get into too many more detailed plot points. (laughs) 
excuse me, as to not spoil it. Um, do I recommend you watch other Doctor Who properties like the past seasons before this? Yes. You watch this before you watch any of the... Uh, this is not an entry point for the Doctor Who series. This is like... This is the culmination. Like This is why this is the fifth... This is like a 50-year special. 50th anniversary special kind of thing. And you can see why. This is the day that like the Doctor talks about a lot through the previous seasons leading up to this. The day that they... That the Doctor killed Gallifrey. Him being the only doctor is a huge part of david tennant's it kind of slips on matt smith's but for david tennant the master is like vastly vastly a part of david tennant's doctor and the master if you don't know is just and that's why i was kind of like uh earlier i was like supposedly it he is another time lord but you know if you want to find out why or who he is kind of they don't go into too many details i don't think but if you want to find out, you'll have to watch the show. I'm not going to spoil it here. Or just look it up. That's your choice. But um, there's a lot to know about these doctors and these personalities and the doctor as a whole. Oh, there is something else I want to mention. They did some pretty neat um, time timey-wimey things in the episode where uh, they could... The war doctor was trying to figure out calculations to open a door. And those calculations because it would take hundreds of years and David Tennant's doctor is hundreds of years older and Matt Smith's doctor is even a couple more hundreds of years older. Those calculations are finished by Matt Smith's, um, what's it called? Uh, oh no. Ah. Screwdriver, Sonic Screwdriver. There you go. I can't believe I've almost forgot the name, um, which is really neat. Although I know the screwdriver has died before and they get new ones, but technically it's all the same. So I guess it did technically do the calculations all at the same time, but it's really neat. And I love this. Uh, 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, 100%. I love, I love it. It is definitely for the fans and it is definitely something that will forever be remembered by me and I will, I will always remember um, a culmination of Matt Smith and David Tennant seeing them interact, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. Matt Smith is like, oh, I never saw myself from this, you know, from the outside. But, you know, because that's the only angle he really has. But David Tennant is kind of like out of his time, really. Because he does not know anything about Matt Smith. He never saw that version of the Doctor before. And the War Doctor, they both know. So really, the Doctor that has the upper hand is Matt Smith here. I mean, that makes sense. He's the most current Doctor. He has all the memories of the other two, plus some. He's the only one that knows more than both of the other Doctors. Which puts him at an advantage. Not that they anything happens between them, because nothing really does. But I'm just saying, it puts him at an advantage, always. It won awards? Wait, what? BAFTA Awards, Wales, winner, special visual effects and graphics, nominee, special effects, BAFTA TV Craft. Huh. Neat. But... I 100% would recommend watching The Day of the Doctor. Uh, watch some, you know, if you haven't seen the other ones, make sure you watch them. Um, it's definitely, I, I feel like Doctor Who for fans is definitely a watch, like a must watch. I mean, obviously you don't know if you like it, but I, I've, I've talked to some people and they don't, they've never seen Doctor Who or they refuse to watch it and I don't know why. It's like any show, you know, give it a shot. And maybe some people I've talked to have watched and just said they weren't into it. And that's fine. I mean, every show is not for everybody. But like the Weeping Angels, for example, is something that will forever kind of stick with me. It's one of the scariest things to the, in the world to me. 
and the way they directed the first episode with the weeping angels where even when the audience was looking you know when the audience wasn't looking and the people in the episode weren't looking then they moved but when the audience is even looking but the people aren't they don't move that's terrifying to me that's terrifying and the cybermen and the upgrades is terrifying this is TV PG, but the concepts are really scary. And for the month of October, I feel like Doctor Who fits right in in the month of October. And I don't know what better to start with than the culmination of 50 years. You know, we're over 50 years at this point. But the 50th special of Doctor Who, which was one of the biggest lead-ups at that point, you know... We, we talking about Avengers Endgame, which was 10 years. This is 50 years. This is 50 years of Doctor Who in the making. Mm, step aside, Avengers Endgame. <laughs> you got something else that has been in the works for even longer. You know, not to hate on anybody who loved Avengers Endgame. I didn't mind it. I, I was a big fan watching it, but Doctor Who I like more. Um. So yeah. And, and that is going to do it. So I have two trailers I want to try to add on. I'll leave links to both of them down below for sure. Um, but I'll see if I can put them on. I might put the like official trailer at the end in a little like small kind of teaser edited one that I found off of the Doctor Who website at the beginning. We'll see what happens. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And again, remember, check out Doctor Who, The Day of the Doctor, and other Doctor Who episodes. I would recommend starting at Season 1 uh, of the new one. That's all you really need to know. Of course, if you're fans of the series and watch the old one, you didn't know if you were the one to get into the new one, I highly recommend it. I haven't seen the old one, uh, obviously, but it is a part of this. They don't forget it. They, they build upon the previous Doctors, and the Doctors do remember the previous incarnations that took place before the season one of the new series. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.